Dear friends, welcome to the International Space Station. I am talking to you right now from inside the most complex machine that humanity has ever built. But it is not only that. It is also one of the most valuable and unlikely achievements of humankind. And on this very day, 20 years ago, its first part was sent out to space. It left planet Earth. If you're younger than 30 years of age, for almost every moment of your life, there was a human being in space on the space stations Mir and ISS. Seven billion humans live on planet Earth. Three humans live in space right now. We are from three different continents. We are friends. We are here for you. We are your eyes looking down on this beautiful planet. We bring home a rare perspective onto ourselves. Our eyes see things down there that otherwise remain unseen. Some good, some bad, some alarming. There was a time when some seemingly crazy optimists dreamt about this ISS project. Other people calling themselves realists said this was not possible. But more and more people understood the meaning of such a project and stood on the optimist sides. In their minds, a visionary spirit, despite all the doubts, and see who was right. Here we are in the most complex machine that humanity has ever built. But this didn't just happen by itself. Humans built this with their visions and with their hands. And we could not have built it if we didn't throw international discrepancies aside and get together on a global level. More than 100,000 individuals from 16 core countries have participated in the construction and from this project, every human on this planet can benefit. This is an achievement far greater than what a single nation could achieve alone. The 20th anniversary of the International Space Station is uh, celebrated by our crew by being directly on board of the ISS. For us, it is a very honorable and important mission. The ISS uh, currently represents the brightest example of the victory of human thought combined with an outstanding example of international cooperation. Our crew, the crew of the 57th expedition, congratulate the entire um, staff of all the people who work uh, in mission controls or any uh, research organizations that are responsible for this uh, amazing project. Congratulations to everyone who follows and supports the International Manned Space Flight. The International Space Station is a unique scientific platform that enables researchers from all over the world to put their talents to work on innovative experiments. Because of our unique microgravity environment, the experiments we perform on ISS cannot be performed anywhere else on the planet. Already, more than 2,500 experiments have been conducted with over 3,000 investigators leading those experiments from over 100 countries, including those by students in multiple schools. This science is being performed in many areas, including biology and biotechnology, Earth and space science, physical science, material science, technology development and demonstration, and of course, human research. What's important to remember is that many of these experiments don't just benefit our ability to live in space, but also directly impact our lives on Earth. From improving water purification worldwide to monitoring natural disasters and even developing improved vaccines, Space station science is truly off the Earth, for the Earth. ISS is a ship that teaches us how to fly beyond the horizon. It covers the distance from the Earth to the Moon within half a day. We are literally the first generation of fish that left Earth's homely ocean. The next generation will set their foot on Mars using the knowledge and technologies developed on the International Space Station. We are proud to serve on such a ship. From the International Space Station.
We wish prosperity to you in everything. We wish you kindness, peace, and further success in achieving our common goals, both on Earth and in space. We're here with Kirk Shireman, the International Space Station Program Manager. Kirk, thanks for joining us today. 20 years since this complex was born with the launch of the Zarya module. It's hard to believe uh, it's been two decades, uh, a complex that has evolved and grown, and grown not only in size, but stature and capability. What experience did the U.S. side and the Russian side and then the other international partners bring to the table to create a complex that we see today thrive and be an international laboratory? Uh, so the United States, of course, had their own spacefaring history, and Russia had their own spacefaring history, and it was really neat to see it joined up. I know we had done a couple of joint programs before, but this was a really long-term, very, very large-scale program. It was really, really interesting to see what people brought to the table. In terms of hardware, of course, the Progress and Soyuz vehicles were the staples of uh, Russian programs before and, and the staples of ISS today. The core module of the Mir space station is essentially the service module of the International Space Station. On the U.S. side, uh, we had begun the manufacture of a number of pieces. It was really more the individual hardware elements, the components that we had brought forward into, into the International Space Station. And of course, the space shuttle, which was the workhorse of, of assembling the International Space Station had been flying since 1981. So all these pieces together had, had existed before Assembling them in a really unique spacecraft has really led to this successful program that we've had. I think few people uh, remember the fact that none of these modules, whether they be U.S., Russian, or international, actually uh, were integrated ahead of time. Uh, and yet, through simulations and through testing and through a lot of hard work, they all seem to come together and work together with very, very few problems. Is that not one of the hallmarks of what we're seeing up there today? I think so. Of course, engineers tend to appreciate those kind of things and the public maybe not as much, but the first two pieces, uh, the Zarya module launching from Kazakhstan and the node uh, Unity from, uh, from the United States, the first time those pieces ever touched each other was you know, 250 miles above the Earth, traveling 17,500 miles an hour. They fit together perfectly, and the electrical signals across the interface was perfect, and yet that was the first time they had ever seen each other. Really, really amazing. So we have this geographical differences, and then as the program matured, we actually had, I'll call them temporal differences. We had modules that were built and flown, and another module was built many years later and actually came up and made it and they all work together. So really a tribute to the, uh, the engineers around uh, the world, both in the United States and Russia, um, Japan, um, ESA, and even commercial companies such as the Bigelow Company, all working together to make this thing happen. So the milestone of 20 years of the International Space Station, not to be forgotten, we just passed the milestone of 18 years of a permanent human occupancy on the International Space Station. Pretty remarkable when you think about that in and of itself. Uh, how important has that been in establishing a permanent human foothold in space for future deep space exploration? Well, it's, I think it's been really very important, both from the, the space community in the United States and Russia, but, but really a thing that I'd like to touch on is more it means to the, to the world. People now, 18 years old, have never known a time when people didn't live and work in space. They take it for granted that humans live and work in space. And yet, just a generation before, everyone knew there was, there was times when not only did humans not fly in space, nothing flew in space. So what a huge progression. We've gone from nothing in space, through Sputnik, through Gagarin, through now the International Space Station, where we've had people living uh, on, for 18 years. So it has changed the mentality, the thought process of everyone on this planet. What a great, great accomplishment that is. Not to mention all the research and uh, things we learned about, we've already learned and we continue to learn. Today, even today, we're learning things about the human body we never knew existed before. Um, it's really changing the knowledge base of the human species. Good point there in terms of the evolution of the space station, not just as an engineering marvel, uh, many call it the most complex machine ever built by humans, but as an international laboratory. That's, that must be very satisfying for you. Yeah, the, first of all, the, the fact that it's international is great. It's not the domain of any one country. 
Today, uh, experiments have been run uh, on board the International Space Station with hardware experiments, investigations that have touched over 103 countries around the world. 103 countries. So not only is it the domain of the partners, the partner countries that are involved in the ISS, researchers from across the globe have participated. So it's something that the whole world can be proud of. We've touched on the fact that uh, there, over two decades there have been very, very few significant technical issues that have cropped up with the space station. But when there have been technical issues, albeit few and far between, uh, how have the U.S. and Russian sides worked together to identify them, to solve them, uh, and to press ahead? Sure. Well, cooperation, I think, is the hallmark of our, uh, of our uh, work together. The United States and Russia began cooperating on ISS in 1993-94, and, uh, and that cooperation is even stronger today than it, ha than it was back then. But all these issues that we've had, whether it's space shuttle has been down for years because we had an accident, or we have just this recent launch abort on a Soyuz vehicle, we all pull together as a partnership, both the United States and Russia, but really also Japan, ESA, and, and Canada all, all pitch in and help each other through these times. So what a great partnership. In fact, I think this is a real strength when we have these issues like this. Everyone, everyone gets together, figures out what we can do to help each other out and, and pull through. So we've had a number of anomalies like I talked about. We've had on-orbit failures. We've had failures when all the U.S. computers failed. We have cases where all the Russian computers failed. And everyone says, how can we help? What can we do? And I think the, the, the fact that the vehicle has been on orbit for, uh, for uh, 20 years and we've had humans on board for 18 years is really a testament to that really strong cooperation which I hope continues on to the future. And in concert with that, Kirk, um, the legacy of this partnership in terms of uh, global diplomacy, how critical has that been? Uh, you know, as, a, as an observer, as a citizen of the United States, I look at, at the, uh, the, uh, the cooperation between the United States and Russia, and it's ebbed and flowed over the years. But the thing I know has remained strong is the cooperation in the space, in particular the International Space Station. I look at us, the International Space Program, as a kernel to continue to grow a very strong, lasting peace between the United States and Russia. And it's been great for these 20 years, and I expect it to be great for years to come. And finally, in that regard, uh, NASA and Roscosmos, how do we plan to uh, work collectively in the future as we move into commercial crew and perhaps uh, the Deep Space Gateway and so forth? All right, today we're cooperating on the International Space Station. Uh, I expect that to continue on for a number of years. We've been working with our Russian partners uh, on the gateway, putting a, a outpost in, uh, in the vicinity of the, the moon, talking about what might happen going on to Mars, going to the lunar surface. All these things we've been talking together, I expect that we'll continue those as international endeavors that will be very strong partners. We have a very, very bright future, I think, together in human spaceflight. Kirk Shireman, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you.